Hey Star Trek fans, Dan Gunther here. Welcome to my review and reaction to the most recent episode of Star Trek Discovery, Season 3, Episode 5, Die Trying. As usual, the first part of this review will be spoiler-free, and I'll give you a warning when I get into spoilers. So, first of all, just my initial thoughts. I've seen a lot of people commenting online before I got a chance to watch the episode that this episode really embodied a lot of the ideals of Star Trek and really felt uh, very Star trek -y. and I know that's kind of a descriptor that I've used a lot lately for episodes in season three of Discovery, and I think it's warranted. I think this season is really embracing wholeheartedly the whole Star Trek mythos and ideals and that sort of thing, and I think that's kind of baked into the uh, premise of the third season and what the crew is going through and what they're encountering, so... Yeah, I, I would agree with a lot of those assessments that I've seen. I really appreciated a lot of the character moments, and some of the turns in the episode really surprised me in the direction that they went, and this show did some things that I really wasn't expecting. There's certain other things in the episode that are obviously meant to carry on into later episodes, and you, we don't have all the answers now, and we don't know what's going on, and... I think that's okay. You know, I've kind of been able to make my peace with that with Discovery over the past few seasons that we don't necessarily get all the answers right away. And this is all just part of a broad tapestry that's ongoing through the season. So yeah, I, I'd say top marks for this episode, a lot of really emotional moments, really nice tributes that I'll get into on the other side of the spoiler warning. Excellent episode, lots of fun, really great character moments and uh, really advancing forward kind of the mystery of season three. So here we go into the spoilers. If you've not watched Die Trying, I would suggest doing so before continuing on. So thanks to Adira Tall in the last episode, we learned how to get to Starfleet and Federation headquarters. The Discovery arrives there to find it as this kind of hidden area. And when they go through the distortion into, into the camouflaged actual headquarters of Starfleet, we see uh, tons of Federation starships and our first kind of real glimpse at what the future of the Federation is at this point. Here's where we get the tributes that everybody has been talking about. Uh, you know, we have the USS Voyager NCC 74656J, so the 11th USS Voyager. I, I appreciated that. I thought it was a nice little touch. I thought it went a little overboard when, you know, the Discovery view screen is focused on it and they're all talking like, ooh, what are the stories there? You know, that kind of thing. I like Easter eggs. I like tributes. Sometimes, you know, when they do too much of a focus on it, it's a, it pulls me out of the story a little bit. But it was very touching. It was nice to see that tribute. The other tribute that, of course, everyone's talking about and that I absolutely love was the USS Nog. Eisenberg class apparently and so very obviously named for the character from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Uh, the the actor Aaron Eisenberg of course fairly recently passed away and, and I thought this was a beautiful tribute. It just you know a wonderful character great actor whom I, I, I had the pleasure of meeting and miss incredibly just a wonderful soul in the Star Trek universe and very cool that he gets this tribute here. So as far as the story itself, of course, this future Starfleet is, you know, initially very, I think, rightfully so wary of Discovery and her crew. We, of course, have been following the Discovery crew. We see things from their perspective. But from the perspective of this future Federation, they've just appeared there and they have no way of necessarily verifying their story and all this stuff. So uh, it's kind of up to the crew to prove themselves to the Starfleet of this era and in order to do that, they undertake this mission to uh, recover a, a seed from a seed vault that will be like a, the, the proper version of a mutated plant that caused a prion infection to these aliens. And that way they'll, they'll prove, you know, the worth of Discovery and her spore drive and of the crew which I thought was uh, an interesting way to go about this. I like the way they do that. The Admiral, who's the CNC of Starfleet at this time, rightfully points out that, yeah, they don't really need the crew except for maybe Stamets. They can just take the ship for themselves. But Burnham, of course, really pushes her perspective and, and convinces him that, you know, to give them this chance to prove themselves. And uh, the mission goes really well with some hiccups and that sort of thing. The part of this story that I found really interesting was was the Barzans and Nan's part in the story. This is not where I thought her character was going. 
she ends up staying behind on this seed vault ship to see the mission through, taking over for her fellow Barzans who uh, have run into these difficulties. Definitely an interesting turn for the character, and especially since the actor that plays her, Rachel Antrill, is in the main credits of the show. She's a she's a primary cast member. I wasn't expecting this to go this way. So again, just kind of that reminder that all things are not uh, steady and 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 certain on Discovery. You know, characters can leave or be killed or or have different things happen. So I, I thought that was interesting and, and a nice reminder of that because I, I do often forget that and kind of get in the mindset of the way Star Trek used to be. I really don't know what to make of the Philippa Georgiou thing and her whole interaction with uh, David Cronenberg, by the way, interesting guest star here, as uh, I'm assuming the Section 31, I don't know that that's outright said. I just watched it the one time. I need to go back and watch it. But that was all really interesting. And uh, the the kind of, she's frozen at the end and Michael kind of has to get her attention and wake her up. I, I wonder what's going on there. I have no idea. I think that's a tantalizing little mystery for uh, the episodes going forward. So not sure what to make of that at this point. I did love the back and forth between Giorgio and David Cronenberg's character. That was really interesting, I, I think. You know, Giorgio's at her most interesting when she's kind of doing the mind games thing. The thing with the holograms, maybe a little silly. I'm, I'm not sure how she managed to uh, learn that technique for holograms that are, you know, a thousand years more advanced. But uh, we'll let that slide, I guess. <laughs> All in all, I think definitely a top-notch episode for season three. You know, five episodes in and there hasn't been a clunker yet, which is interesting. So yeah, really excited to see where this all goes. Not quite as emotionally moving, I think, as last week's episode was, but there were still some parts that were, were very good. I think Non and the Barzans, I think that whole thing was very well done, very uh, emotionally compelling, and uh, I, I buy her motivation, you know. I, I'm surprised that she left Discovery, but I buy her motivation to do so. You know, this is someone who has this kind of capacity for self-sacrifice. She came on board because of Arium, and this is kind of just the next logical progression of that, that she's willing to put herself out there for others and, and to alleviate the suffering of others and, and, and that sort of thing. So, yeah, very, very impressed with this episode. But I want to hear what all of you thought of it. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. What do you think of this new vision of Starfleet that we have? And, you know discovery's kind of mission under this admiral to to do what he says and you know they're back in the fleet it sounds like so very interesting I'm, I'm curious to see what the situation going forward will be thank you of course to the patreon supporters as usual for all of their help in bringing these videos to you i truly do appreciate it and could not do it without you thank you so very much to everyone else thank you for watching thank you also for liking this video if you liked it subscribe to kurt Tratz productions if you haven't already and share this video with someone you think might appreciate a more positive look at star trek in general and star trek discovery on youtube i know youtube has a reputation for being a bit of a cesspool of negativity and hatred towards the new star trek let's uh let's change that narrative you know let's see what we can do Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And as always, live long and prosper.